let's now move to the uh, to the tree and the beginning of laying out the main line system. As this producer has done uh, using the anchor system that we have rather than the wrapping of the wire, the main line wire around the tree, uh, which is probably fast and, and expedient. The good thing about this is that the wound that has been introduced in this tree is really not much larger than the wound from a single year's tapping. Uh, it's a much more reliable way of attaching the, uh, the mainline system. Uh, I see this producer has learned early on that uh, the eye bolt that is introduced into the tree, it's smart while it's still in the shop to weld the bend shut as they've done in this case. Uh, simply the pressure of, of the high tensile 12 and a half gauge wire uh, with several hundreds of pounds of pressure is enough to open up this eye bolt even though these are 7 16 inch bolts they will open over time. So a word to the wise is not to use a, a J bolt or a hook, uh, drill a pilot hole into the tree and, and turn this in. I suppose over, over a, a 10 or 15 year period one would have to worry about the tree growing out over this. The one thing you have to be aware of down the line is if this ever becomes a saw log, you've got a pretty substantial piece of iron in the, in the tree. Uh, using the fence stretchers is a good way of, of relieving or tightening the line along the way, although this main line is tightened by the zigzag up through the woods with tie backs to uh, side trees. As we move along in this one place, we've got uh, the introduction of the, of the main lines here. You've got two one inch lines and a three quarter inch line coming to the releaser from several areas along the woodlot. Uh, they've used the typical method of, of uh, using wire baggage ties or the ties that are used to put rebar together to secure the main line uh, to the high tensile wire. These wire ties are as close as you would ever have to use. Uh, usually you refer to this as about a foot apart. Uh, these are much closer than that. The important thing is to have as few sags as possible. Wherever there's a sag in a main line, it will create a block when this is full of sap uh, as you're moving a, a vacuum along the lines. This installation is, is both a wet and dry line installation where the individual pipes are being used both to transport sap and to conduct vacuum to all parts of the woodlot. The sag that you see in this line is something that you want to work against, uh, particularly the sag that we see where it makes the elbow uh, to the south as, we, as you look up this line. Uh, that would prevent any vacuum from moving up through the, the, uh, the main line system. If that pipe is full of water or full of sap, you will only get vacuum to the slug of sap that is in that. So you want to ensure that, that there's an even grade, uh, a downhill grade in all parts of the, of the main line system with as few sags as possible. Now that's a mixed blessing as you're moving along because if you've got this tight uh, and everything is up to, up to uh, uh, a tight snug uh, during the cold part of the year, uh, it will sag during the warmer season. If you put this out in the middle of the summer and have everything tight, there's a good chance that when things turn cold, the expansion and contraction of the line is going to pull the unions apart as you move up and down the line. Those are things you need to think about as you're installing your lines.